the day we have the feast of St. Martina, one of the great martyrs of the early centuries, and uh, in the time of Diocletian. And we'll read here the Epistle and the Gospel of the Virgin and Martyr. The Epistle, I'm going to be here again in New Hampshire, in uh, Hancock. And here the Epistle is taken from St. Paul's letter to Ecclesiasticus, I mean, from the Old Testament, Book of Ecclesiasticus, Chapter 51. I will give glory to thee, O Lord, my King, and I will praise thee, O God, my Savior. I will, I will give glory to thy name, for thou hast been a helper and protector to me, and hast, pre hast preserved my body from destruction, from the snare of an unjust tongue, and from the lips of them that forge lies, and in the sight of them that stood by. Thou hast been my helper, and thou hast, been, thou hast delivered me according to the multitude of, thy, of the mercy of thy name, that from them that did fear, prepared to devour out of the hands of them that sought my life, and from the gates of, of, of afflictions, which compassed me about, the, about from the oppression of the flame which surrounded, which surrounded me, and in the midst of the fire I was not burnt, from the depth of the belly of hell, and from an unclean tongue, and from lying words, from an unjust king, and from a slanderer, a slanderous tongue. My soul shall praise the Lord, even to death, because thou, O Lord, our God, delivered them that, that, that wait for thee, and, and savest them out of the hands of the nations. And then the gospel, taking that according to St. Matthew, chapter 25. At that time Jesus spoke to his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is, is, shall be like unto ten virgins, who taking their lamps went out to meet the bridegroom and the bride. And five of them were foolish and five wise. But the five foolish, having taken their lamps, did not take oil with them. But the five, but, but the wise took oil <clears throat> in their lamps. In, the, in their vessels with the lamps, and the bridegroom tarrying, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there, arose, there, there was a very, there was a cry made, Behold, the, the bridegroom cometh, go ye forth to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are, are gone out. The, vi the, the wise answered, saying, Lest perhaps there be not enough for us and for thee and for you. Go you or rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Now whilst they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they, were, were, they that were ready went in with him in the marriage, and the door was shut. But at that, uh, but at, but but it, but at last came also the other virgins, saying, "Lord, Lord, open to us." But they answered, uh, saying, "Amen, I say to you, I know you not. Watch ye therefore, because you know know not the day nor the hour." Those were the words of today's holy gospel. Amen. Father, the Holy Ghost, amen. So a few considerations on this very often read gospel on the five foolish and the five five wise virgins. And St. Augustine and St. Jerome make several points. And God gives this parable of five foolish and five wise. This is one of the parables where our Lord describes those who end up in hell. Remember the other parable of, of Divas and Lazarus and the parable of the talents and here the parable of the wise and the foolish virgins. Divas and Lazarus. Lazarus ends up in hell. Divas ends up in hell because he did not feed Lazarus. He didn't do the works of charity. And the, the man with the very the talent ends up in hell because he did not multiply. He did not take the work that was given to him by his superior, by God, and, or, and then develop it and make it grow into something that was to increase as St. Saint, uh, Saint, uh, Gregory the Great says, 
we say that Jesus Christ is the good shepherd. And it's true that when we consider the good shepherd, he goes after the lost sheep. But the first thing about a good shepherd is a shepherd who makes the increase of the flock, who, and who protects the flock, increases the flock, and the good shepherd goes beyond that and goes after the lost sheep. But the, but the good shepherd could not be called a good shepherd if he only went after the lost sheep and did not build the flock of Christ. And so that the good shepherd and the other shepherd, and remember the parable, the, good, and the, 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 the prophecy of the good shepherd made in Ezekiel, cried, cried, condemns the wicked shepherds. Now we have the five wise and the five foolish virgins. And these five foolish virgins, they shall also be in hell. And the first thing St. Augustine notes, note that they are virgins. They are not impure. They are not given to drunkenness. And in a very similar way, you also note concerning Dives and Lazarus, that Dives is not impure, and Dives is not in drunkenness, and Dives does not do drugs, and Dives doesn't murder and rob banks, etc. So Dives is the man who finds himself in hell because he didn't take care of the poor one outside of his gate. And the virgins find themselves in hell. And here the virgins refer not only to men, but to women also. To, I mean, to women, but to men also. Because when we consider the, 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 in the Latin, the word anima is a feminine word. It means soul. So when we talk about the soul, we refer to the soul as her. And so that the, the virgins can, are the souls that are living in the state of grace. Or they think they are. The souls that are taking care to, to stay away from the bad things, but they don't light their candles. They don't keep fire in their lamps. And so this, the five foolish virgins don't have enough. The, the, the fire in their lamp went out, but they were waiting in the night. They went into the night, but then the, when, the, when, the, when, the, when the cry came that the bridegroom was coming, the five wise virgins said to the five, uh, five foolish ones, said to the wise, give us some of your oil. And the wise said, we cannot give you our oil, because if we give you our oil, there won't be enough for us and for thee. And here we know there's a difference between oil and bread. If you go to your neighbor and ask for bread, and he only has a little bit of bread, not enough bread, he should break the bread and give it. When Elias came and asked the woman of Sarepta for some soup and porridge, she said, there's not enough porridge for us and for thee. There's not enough porridge for my son and myself and for thee. I was going to eat the porridge and my son, and then we we're going to die. And Elias says, I don't care. You must give first to the prophet of God, and then there will not the porridge will not run out. So when it comes to porridge, and when it comes to bread, even if there's none left, we can give it. But the oil cannot be given. And the oil is interior charity, and the oil is the love of God in our hearts, and the oil is what makes the joints of our good works move. And the, the oil is that the knowledge and love of God that's really inside of us. What are we seeking after? And notice also that the five wise and five foolish virgins go to a place in the middle of the night, and they're not allowed inside. So there is the house of the bridegroom, which would be like heaven. And then they're going there, but they can't go in until the bridegroom comes. Just like the Jews, when they walk in the desert, they were not able to cross the desert all the way until the, until the fire brought them across the desert, until the cloud brought them across the desert. They had to follow the fire and the cloud. And they couldn't cross the desert until the fire and the cloud said, it is time for us to cross the desert. And the fire and the cloud is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost signified by the fire and the Holy Ghost signified by the cloud that led the Jews for 40 years. We can follow God and follow God and follow God, but we cannot cross into the Holy Land until the promised land of heaven, until he says it's time to cross. And our Lord said, you know not the day or the hour. It ended up being a 40-year walk for the Jews. It ended up being a lot longer than anticipated for the five foolish virgins. But what are we doing in the night? We are to be reminded of what we're doing in the night when we're in such a time as we are right now. There's a great night in our church since Vatican II. It's getting worse and worse now with Pope Francis and Pope Benedict our former Pope Benedict, you know, ruling our church in wickedness, like Annas and Caiaphas. And it's getting worse, Vatican II. And then the situation in our country is getting worse, and the world is getting worse, and we're getting closer and closer to one world government. And it's interesting how many people wanted to go to other countries. In the last 10 years, last 20 years, many Americans are going to other countries because when it all collapses here, they're going to be somewhere else. But we discovered in March of 2020 
that when the coronavirus pandemic hit and the evil world commands hit, they didn't just hit the United States. They didn't just hit in Europe. They hit in all the places where the many men have gone to escape. They escaped to the Philippines. They escaped to South America. They escaped to other countries to be safe. In the very beginning of this of this of this event, one of our the father of one of our, our our parishioners in Michigan, the father of one of our parishioners who himself is not one of our parishioners, he went to South America to escape, and he died. He died. He died in March of last year. He didn't make the escape. Why did he die? Because he was separated from his medications. He wasn't able to get to the place where he was supposed to go. He died and his body was left on the ground in Ecuador for four days before they would allow to even come and collect his body. He wasn't able to get his heart medication. He wasn't able to, he was, he had everything prepared. So many souls are prepared. They had, he had land across in another country. He was prepared, but he wasn't able to get to that land. He wasn't able to get to it. So that this preparation is not the preparation that works in the time of darkness. Many souls are repaired by, by burying guns and burying ammo and burying water and burying supplies. But then they weren't able to get to their supplies. They died before they were touched their supplies. And they forgot about what our Lord Jesus Christ said in the gospel in another of his parables. That there was a man that set up all kinds of food to prepare for the night. He prepared all kinds of food. He stored it in his barn. But then for the winter time, and then he died in the night, and someone else got the food. Someone else got his stuff. And so there our Lord says, but material preparation is not valuable at all. And material preparation does not guarantee any, be, any ability to survive. Because what if your barn is filled with supplies and you die? Problem number one. What if your barn is filled with supplies and you're locked out of your barn and you can't get to your barn? And what if your barn is filled with supplies and by the time you get to them, you find out all the food is corrupted and it's no good anyway. So there are many things that can go wrong when you put your food in the barn. And so that the, 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 this is not the proper preparation for the time of darkness. Now the five wise and the five foolish virgins went into the night. And why did they go into the night? They were waiting for the bridegroom. The five wise virgins wanted to be ready for the bridegroom, ready for the bridegroom, ready for the bridegroom. And here St. Augustine tells us, we live in the night. We're the night. Not just the night of the 21st century, but the night of wicked age from the time that Adam decided to eat the apple until the very ending of the world, there's going to be one wicked age after another. And the majority of souls are going to be wicked. And there'll be wicked kings... Wicked magistrates, wicked priests, wicked bishops. You're going to have one wicked pope at a time, but now we have two. And only one of them is the real pope. But you have all. But you have the wickedness is limited. Is going to be all around us. How do we prepare for the coming of the bridegroom? We must remember in the night that we are here to prepare for the coming of the bridegroom, and that is our Lord Jesus Christ. And he will come and open the doors of heaven at the moment that he arrives. And when it is opened, we will come in, or we will not be there. If we come in when he's there, we, the doors will be shut. And they are going to be shut. And if we come back too late, it's no good for us, like the five foolish virgins. So we must recognize, how do we prepare for the coming of Christ in the time of darkness? Keep the lamp lit. Keep the lamp lit. And that lamp is a lamp of faith, hope, and charity, the principles of the supernatural life. And remember, faith, hope, and charity are not actions. They're not things we do. They are the principles by which we do things. What makes me do something? When a friend comes over who may give you business, you're going to take a, you're going to take a friend out to eat, and that friend may give you a $100 million job. You make sure you take them to a nice restaurant, you dress nice, you talk nice, you act very well because you're taking him out to eat in order to get a big contract. You're taking a beggar out to eat. You don't take him to the finest restaurant. You don't take him. You don't treat him very well. You just simply get him the minimal McDonald's Happy Meal. Maybe he can get the he can get the the, 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 the toy, and that's it. And that. But why, how do we act according to what we are after? We consider that we're losing something when we give money to a beggar. We consider we're gaining something when we give money to someone in business. What is inside the heart? What motivates our actions? And this is what Christ judges. We have to give money to people in business. We have to give money, and we have to give money in, in uh, uh, to charity, and we we give money to take care of our own needs. 
But what motivates? What's the spirit behind it? The th five foolish virgins, the five wise virgins, rather, they, they were, had only one focus on their minds. We're here for the coming of the bridegroom. We're awaiting his coming. We must recognize he may come in the middle of the night. He may come in a very dark hour. He may be late. He may not, we do not know the hour was coming. So we're going to make sure we bring enough oil. We're going to bring enough oil. That's what matters. What do we need to store up in this time of crisis? We need to store up the works of charity. We need to store up the contemplation of things of God. We need to store up prayer. We need to store up the love of God inside of our hearts and our faith. That's what we have to store up. There is a certain awareness of external things. That's fine. A certain awareness of what's going on. But we don't need to store up all that knowledge. Watch and pray. Now notice the Lord says, watch and pray lest ye enter into temptation. Now there's two kinds of watching. And both are done in the night. And the light is there. Now the light is put around a city, says St. Augustine, that it might be a defense. Because when the enemy approaches, you can see him. So the light makes it possible for us to see the enemy. But the light is also makes it possible for us to see the bridegroom when he comes. And the light there to guide the bridegroom in so that he is not left outside in the cold. The thief does not always come. We don't know when he's going to come. And now we don't know when the bridegroom is coming. So we have the light of the night. To, to on the one side have an awareness in case there's any thieves that come. And we have the light of the night so that the bridegroom can come. And what is the most important when the bridegroom comes? We will make sure that we have the feast prepared for him. We will make sure that we're ready to receive him. We'll make sure we give the warning to all to rise and be ready to receive him when he comes into the, into the place, into, into our house. We are preparing for the coming of the bridegroom. And this is a, and so that there is a double preparation. And one of the dangers of our times right now is there's a little too much of looking for all the bad things, and there are many bad things, and all the wickedness going on, all the wicked planning, all the wicked conspiracies, and all the wicked things that are happening. We must have a certain awareness not to fall into all those traps. But our focus is that we are preparing for the bridegroom. We're here to prepare for Christ. We walk through the night. And why do we go on a journey through the night? To get to the place called heaven. To get to the place where the bridegroom is. Otherwise, we stay at home. We are traveling through the night of this world in order to get to our true home. And notice in the lives of the martyrs, when they were finally imprisoned, when they were finally questioned, they always turned to God. The very first martyr, what did he do? When St. Stephen was about to be stoned to death, he turned his eyes to heaven, and he saw the heavens opened, and St. Stephen said, I see the Son of Man standing in great glory on the side of God, and it is most beautiful to behold. And they stopped up their ears because they could not bear to hear what St. Stephen was saying. This is what we are after. We must remember that the devil in the time of crisis wants us to be afraid. He wants us to be excessively aware of all the wickedness. So at this election on January the 20th, the one on the side of Satan was, in, was put in charge. Joseph Biden was put in charge. He's of the kingdom of Satan, nothing, nowhere near the kingdom of God. And the wickedness of communism is now all around our country, and they're implementing wickedness throughout this whole country. The wickedness has been here for hundreds of years, but now it's officially in charge in a very visible and clear way. What are we to do? We are to remember that that wickedness and even greater wickedness when the Antichrist comes will never be enough to take us away from God. Will never be enough to extinguish the fire in our lamps. That we have to have fire in our own lamps. There are many things we can give to our neighbors in charity. But love and faith and hope, these are not three that can be given to our neighbors. We can give an example of faith, hope, and charity. But we can't give faith, hope, and charity. This is the fire that burns in our lamps. And so this fire cannot be burnt out, cannot be passed on directly. We can encourage others, and we can ask the grace of God to give it to others, but we cannot pass it on directly. Like the old adage, it says, you can bring a horse to water, but you cannot make him drink. You can teach about charity. You can teach about hope. You can teach about faith. You can give an example of charity, an example of hope, and an example of faith. But these three things can only be taken in by an individual. These are the fire the fire that guides our movements. And this fire is one of two loves that guides us. It's either the fire of self-love or the fire of the love of God. And one of the dangers of our times is that the preparation, this fire that motivates the preparation, 
of putting food and storable foods and putting water and putting all these things we need, moving out to the country and putting machine gun nests around our house and making sure you're ready for, to survive a 10-year chastisement. What is the motivating force? It might be that I live and that I take care of me, and that the whole world dies, I don't care, but I'm going to survive. It might be that the love of self is that which motivates us, and this love is always deadly. Hence the five wise virgins, they came in the night. They didn't want to carry all that extra oil that's heavy. It was a burden to them, but they carried it so that whenever the bridegroom would come, they would be ready for him. The five foolish virgins did not carry the oil, only the bare minimum, because it was too heavy and uncomfortable for them. And besides, bridegroom must come very quickly, and if he doesn't, they can always borrow some oil or get some more. It's like the Catholic who says, I can always go to confession. I can always go to confession. I can become generous next year. I can change my ways next year, next, 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 in, in the next 10 years when I get old. I'll change, I'll change, I'll change. Right now, I'm going to be comfortable and take care of me. The five foolish virgins have this spirit, and what made them do the things they did was the love of self. The five wise virgins, they carried their extra oil, and they did this because they had the love of God. And we must see also in our present crisis, look at the example of sacred scripture. There are many. Joseph was thrown into prison, and he was betrayed by the wicked woman uh, uh, when he was under Futafar. And he was thrown into prison because of a wicked woman that tried to get Joseph to sin, and he refused to sin. And because he refused to sin, what happened? He became the instrument to save the entirety of Egypt, and the instrument to save the entirety of the Jewish people and the whole world. Why? Because he said no to sin and accepted being thrown in prison. And because he said no to sin and accepted being thrown in prison, he became in the right place at the right time to save the whole world. Whereas another man other than, lesser than Joseph would have said, well, I'll commit a sin now in order to survive and get by in this world, and I'll go to confession later. But Joseph didn't do that. He was as the wise virgins. Let the oil of divine faith, the oil of divine love, and the oil of divine hope burn inside of us. And we recognize in our present crisis, we worry so much about the wrong things. It's like the foolishness of the human foolishness of those poor girls who walked to the tomb on Holy Easter Sunday morning. And they said, who shall roll back for us the stone? How is that stone going to be rolled back? Who's going to roll back the stone? When Jesus Christ had already risen the dead, the angels had already rolled back the massive stone, and he had already conquered hell and conquered all wickedness, and he is already in heaven and opened the gates of heaven, and they're worried about a little bitty rock. So it is with us. We look at little bitty crises, which we see as great crises. We're looking at the wrong things. We can deal with little crises. You know, we can deal with little crises, but they're just that. They're little crises. The great crisis is the crisis of faith, the crisis of hope, and the crisis of charity. And this makes sure that faith, hope, and charity governs all of our actions. And then we'll know when to fight, when to run, when to stand still, and in all cases, not to worry about the material considerations excessively, not to worry about those things, but leave things truly in the hand of God. And as we travel through the night, let's travel as the wise virgins and not as the foolish ones. Bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.